we met many years ago. I say many years ago. It felt only like yesterday. And I do miss going to Cardiff and and seeing your your guys and your team. And and I always remember, as I said, um, as a company trainer, I bumped into you and your team, and you have always got a smile on your face, and you're always asking the right questions. You always wanted to learn, um, and that's the key. You want to learn. And what what do you do? Or what did you used to do for a living, Cheryl? So I used to be a PE teacher. And um, so that was my background. I always wanted to teach PE um, from, from a young age. So I did that for 17 years um, and I had my children. So I've got two girls, they're 13 and 15 now. And I was introduced to this business uh, when I was part-time teaching. My youngest had just gone to, to full-time school. And I thought, what, what am I gonna do with my time? I didn't want to go back full-time. I wanted to stay part-time, um, but I knew I would like a little bit more income coming in and um, just to have those nice things like family holidays and be able to spoil the kids a little bit more and that's when I was introduced to this. And your husband Tim he's a teacher isn't he? Yes yeah he's a teacher he's full-time uh, he was full-time but this is the third year he's actually been four days a week as a teacher and that did shock the school quite a lot actually when somebody of a senior level um, asked to drop a day. Wow wow and what, what does he teach? He teaches P as well yeah so we're ah, so met, in, met in college. So a, a keep fit family then <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, as teachers, what attracted you to this? I mean, you know, most people go, oh, you know, I'm a teacher. I, that's a, maybe it's a bit beneath me or something. What attracted you to UW? And did you have any doubts when you joined? If I can be honest, yes. I was probably one of the most sceptical people when I joined. Um I loved saving money. My mum and my dad um, split up when I was young. And for me, I was always taught by both of my parents to watch your pennies and the, the pounds will look after themselves. Um, so I was always taught to be a bit thrifty and careful with my money, uh, not overspend as such. And, you know, look for look for offers, look for deals, look for any savings where possible. So when I was shown this um, as a possibility to saving me money on, on our utilities, I actually thought there's no way that's going to work for me because I'm really clever and savvy anyway. But it did. And then I thought, well, if it worked for me, it will work for other people. And I could quite easily, you know, encourage other people to do this. People come to me for advice on how they can cut costs anyway. Um, but I was really sceptical. And Derek Thomas um, will actually remember, you know, he often reminds me how in meetings and trainings, I would always be the one asking questions with a little bit of a tone, expecting not to have the answer the way that I was expecting it. So I was proved wrong and all I can say is I'm really glad I stayed in and I'm really glad I asked all those questions in the early days, otherwise we wouldn't be here now. Yeah, and, and you know, let's be honest, you know, in the early days, um, you, you join something and then you tell your friends, you're all excited and your friends go, oh, it sounds like a pyramid to me or one of those dodgy things or how can they beat BT, you know, BT own all the phone cables and how can they sell it cheaper than the energy? So I can hear all those things and then, uh, or, or I had one last night, I've Googled Utility Warehouse and the Guardian newspaper says, and you think, oh my goodness me, and that was like 20 years ago. I don't think the Guardian exists anymore, does it? I don't know. But um, yeah, and you hear that from a new person or you're a new person yourself and you hear this kind of negativity. How did you get over that yourself? Um, just keeping on asking questions, plugging into the system, going to the team meetings, um, connecting with people and asking different people the same questions just to see if I was being tricked or they were being pre-warned um, pre about the answers. I even thought that, you know, I'll, I'll ask five people the same question, see if I get the same answer. You um, think they're all actors or something in the room? Oh, I thought they were all paid to, and to, um, um, prepared, you know, to give me the answers that they, they were supposed to give me, not the truth. And then I remember Robbie Brooks um, saying uh, the first MAD event that I was going to go to and I was re reluctant to book. Um, I thought, why on earth do I want to go to that happy, clappy celebration thing where they're all going to be chanting? It's going to be a bit like a cult. And Robin Brooks said, if you don't enjoy it, if anybody doesn't enjoy it, I will personally give your money back. And I thought, well, that's it. I'm having my money back. No, no, no worries there whatsoever. I'll go. I'll spend the time. But at least I know I'll get my money back. And, and I didn't have the guts to go and ask me for my money back. So I actually did really enjoy it. <laughs> you did enjoy it. And it wasn't all happy clappy, was it? It was there no. Was, no, no. Except for when you were on stage, it was happy clappy then. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about your achievements, Cheryl, because um, you do it together. You and Tim do it together. Um, 
I always I always see you as the the the, the shining lights of the of you two, you know, because you are, I would say, slightly different sim. You seem to be more out there, you you know, and Tim seems to be the quiet one, you know, opposites attract, I suppose. And you know, yeah, but you've got I think this so. huge business, haven't you? Tell us tell us a little bit about yourself, what you've achieved and what your team have achieved. Okay, fab. So it started off where, you know, we got to team leader, I think, um, just under two years, which wasn't wasn't breaking any records at all. Um, we didn't start to recruit early on, which we wish we had. Um, so rowing with both oars is something I always teach my, my team members now from day one. Uh, in fact, we actually start with recruiting now as opposed to customer gathering if possible. Um, that's when my husband decided, oh, that, that looks quite good. Um, you've achieved a, a six-star cruise and you've achieved team leader. That sounds all right. Maybe, maybe I'll jump on board. Oh, and I think we'd ordered the mini as well, which was quite nice. Um, so I think Tim just realised that it was such a nice thing. He'd come to one of the events. I think it was a fab event um, with Robin Brooks. And um, he'd gone to play golf while I was at the seminar. And then he'd come back for the party in the evening which was a really nice way to introduce a partner. So if anybody's got a partner that they'd like to introduce to this business, I can totally recommend that. Take them to a social event uh, to begin with, ease them in gently. Um, and I remember him chatting to Jog Ashoka, um, springs to mind, and he just thought, what a normal, nice bloke, you know, and asked, asked, asked some questions, was given a little bit of, of, of advice. And I think that was his light bulb moment to get involved, um, despite the fact that he couldn't do as much as me because I, I was only work, teaching part-time then. He was still teaching full time and we had two kids under the age of eight. So um, it was quite busy. Plus, you know, we wear lots of other hats. I play netball, I coach uh, um, and we do lots of things together. So it just kept growing, really. He started to introduce people that he worked with. So rather than saying, look, you need to speak to Cheryl. We've got this great thing that she's doing. He would actually then start speaking to colleagues and say, well, rather than making an appointment with Cheryl, I can see you after work or at lunch break or I can come and see you in the evening. He's yeah. got the connections with those. So we, we kind of worked it that way, really, that, you know, we one of us would take take control of the kids and tea and one of us would be on an appointment. But we didn't let it take over. You know, we did still have things that we did as a family. Um, and then, you know, we, we went for the next holiday promotion, which was a holiday to France, where we met lots of other people, uh, the family holiday, which was the first one that they, they allowed us to choose. Um, and that was great that we could take the kids. So that was amazing. And then we achieved the next holiday, which was a um, holiday to, to Florida, Orlando, which was absolutely amazing. And I think in between that, we hit 200 plus club. We hit senior team leader and we were well on our way to, to group leader, which is where we are now and striving for senior group leader. Wow. So 200 plus clubs, so 200 plus customers or more. You've achieved these holidays. Um, describe a holiday to all the new people on here because we're going to launch new holidays or we are launching yeah. new holidays. I don't know where the destinations are. Um, I have no idea, so don't ask me. But um, what would you say to any of the new people on here about the holidays? What is the standard of a family holiday, for example? Okay, so I, I told you I was a little bit sceptical at the beginning. Um, I think I joined in the February and they were just going to Las Vegas. And then they came back and they announced new holidays that March, April time at Express Day, which um, I hadn't attended. Um, and then I thought, there's no way they're real. If they're real, you know, then surely only a handful of people are going to go. If they are real, then, you know, these pictures, they're all framed. They've got pictures, you know, they've got people framing it all. I honestly was that sceptical. I didn't believe the holidays were real. And I thought, well, what, what if they are? And we started just customer gathering, we, like I said, we didn't really recruit in the beginning. So we just started sharing it with people. We got lots of no's along the way, but we got some yeses as well. And a few months in, we realized we were actually on track for the holiday. And then a few months later, we thought, oh, we could actually do this. Um, if it is real, you know, we'd be ashamed to miss out on it and free holiday. So we kept going and then it was a bit of a push towards the end. Some months were a bit hairy, last, last day of the month, trying to make some last minute phone calls to get those points in. Yeah. But I have to say, oh my goodness, the holidays are just out of this world. Something I could never have imagined. I got goose pimples actually, because- oh, You've given me goosebumps oh my because goodness. I'm thinking of the holidays, yeah. I know, and that first holiday, a six star cruise, I mean, they didn't even know six star holidays existed. Um, and I'm not saying we did pontins all the time with the kids, but six star, I mean, what's that about? And a cruise ship, oh my goodness. Uh, just, I cannot, I, without spoiling it for people who will achieve it, because guys, you have to all go for it because you have to experience it. And once you've experienced one, you want another one and you want another one. Because the way I saw it, that every time I helped somebody save money, they thought I was the bee's knees anyway. I not only got paid, 
but it was like putting a savings amount into a savings account, a, a lump of money towards a holiday that cost me nothing. So it was just, uh, you know, it was just a no-brainer to me. It was win-win. I, I always remember um, my experience with the Six Star Cruise was um, I, some, quite, I had a few of my team on the, on the cruise as well, and I thought, I'll get them all together. And so I said to the reception desk, I said, I'd like to get my guys and girls in my cabin together and, and have, have a little sort of party. And I suggested, oh, we, we could do some canapes, blah, blah, blah. I said, all oh, right, fine. They actually sent out these personal invites on beautiful cards saying, Mr. and Mrs. Barris would like to invite you to their suite on the ship. And I had, I had three butlers in my cabin. This is how big the cabins were as well. I had these three butlers with canapes, champagne, my team were coming in, we're all there going, this is amazing, this is, and, I, and it cost me nothing. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I missed that invite though, Rob. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> holidays, 200 personal customers, so you've had the Porsche. Had the Porsche, yes, that was quite interesting, driving it up to the family's house, you know, so the ones that said yes, that we, they got spin around the block, those that said no, we, um, we just waved. <laughs> So Cheryl, how do people, lots of people are going to be saying, how do you get your customers? So it's changed along the years, to be honest. In the beginning, it was using that warm list and then using referrals. And I wasn't very good at referrals in the beginning. Um, so I had to get better. So I had to learn. So I learned from those that were doing it really well. Looked on the partner portal, um, using um, team events to, to really get good at referrals. Um, and then I dipped my toe in with Winner Minis. Um, and then I also tried some neighborhood letters but once you start and you and you've got a you know you're on a bit of a, a, a roll um things do come back to you so over time then i think i remember the first time somebody actually messaged me and said oh my your number and name has been given to me by x person um they said you've helped them um, could you help me and i just remember turning to my husband tim and saying oh my goodness look it, it actually works people do tell other people about it yeah. So we've just got to encourage that. And that takes time for your reputation to grow and for also um, people that you've helped in the beginning, for them to actually learn how amazing Utility Warehouse is and how well looked after they are, for them to then go and tell other people. So people have got to stay in a little while to see that happening. Yeah. And, and you, you know, obviously you've got a, a young family, you have a busy life, your husband's still working. You know, how do you fit this in? Do you do, are you quite good at like time management? Do you have a diary or do you just wing it like I do? <laughs> um, I fluctuate between all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> I find I'm best when I'm winging it. Um, you know, sometimes you can't plan, can you? You know, life is really busy, but the nooks and crannies are really important. And I think the better I'm getting at this business is making sure that I plan my phone calls so that I do prioritize those at some point towards the beginning of the week or at the end of the week for the following week. And I teach, try and teach my team to do the same. Um, but yeah, you know, you can do this full-time, part-time or from time to time. And within this last few years, things have fluctuated for me with different commitments and different things that have gone on in my life. Um, but I definitely think planning to a certain extent is important and absolutely vital. Like I say, making those phone calls and sending the messages. There's no point getting to Wednesday night when you're free for appointments and you think, oh, whoops, I didn't do those phone calls. So now I'm sat here twiddling my thumbs and I could have been making some money and helping some other people. Yeah. So, so that's a great top tip, by the way, Cheryl, to actually plan when you're going to make those phone calls, whether it be um, during the day or in the evening. You put some time aside, nothing else into interferes with that you don't look at your facebook you don't look at your any social media you don't look at your emails just look at your list of who's a phone and you, and you get on and make those calls yeah yeah and the other thing we do rob is as a family we know when our main commitments are with each other so if we if the kids have got commitments and they need taking somewhere or if my husband's doing certain things in, in work I, I know in advance what our plan is everything that can't move and is really important to us goes in the diary first and then all the all the free spots are, are highlighted um to us yeah, no, fantastic. Um, recruitment. So how do you, you say when you first started, you started off with gathering customers, but now you switch it, you lead with recruitment. Explain that to, to the guys and girls on the Zoom today. So it, it starts from when you actually, if, if you find somebody, so I'll start with finding people. Um, it's really important that when we're doing this presentation, that it's not a customer presentation, it's a presentation and we have two offerings to share with people. And we have to show that whole presentation. Don't prejudge. Don't think the business isn't for them. Because if it isn't for them, you might be right. But they may know lots of people that this business could be, could be for. So really important that we don't prejudge and we share it with everybody. 
Um, and, and, and it's really highlighting the benefits of what the business has done for you. Or if you if you if by talking to them and listening to them, they've got certain pains or things that they want from life that they currently can't have. It's using somebody else's story that you know of in your business or cross team that you can share with them to maybe highlight that their pain could be helped by our business. So that's the first thing. If then they, they decide they want to do this business, what I do with new team members is the fast up plan. I'm really strict with it, that we follow it to the letter. I tell them in advance that they have to have that list um, ready on that fast start meeting. They do the, their online training within 48 hours and then I and we book the appointment for their fast start meeting. And I do let them know they need to text me when they finish their training because if they haven't finished their online training, I don't go ahead with the fast start meeting. And I just really reiterate the importance of my time that I'm prepared to commit to them if they're prepared to commit to me. Um, so I need them to value my time. And I do let them know that in that meeting, um, that not to say the same thing to anybody until that meeting, but in that meeting, we will be firming up some, some appointments where I will be sharing the presentation with people that they know. And in that point, in that meeting, I just say, look, we need to start with looking at who do you know that switched on ambitious and motivated? So we're looking for those SANS people. Um, they're the people we want to share this with first, because if you could do this journey with people that you know, like and trust, it's going to make it so much more fun. Yeah, that's why you've got a happy, smiley, ambitious team, you see, because that's <laughs> what you focus on. Happy, smiley people. Yeah, I like right. I like to think my guys and girls are all happy, smiling, but we've got Stuart Evanston on. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, um, yeah. Anyhow, um, so I'm going to open it up, Shell, to the guys and girls so they can ask some questions and and, and uh, hopefully not put you on the spot. But yeah, um, any of the guys and girls got any questions, wave your hands and we'll bring you in and... Um, Ask me anything. They're all quiet. Look at them. Oh, bless them. They're all very, very quiet. Okay. Leon, I'm sure you're going to ask a question because you're very new and you would like to, I'm sure. Hi. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, um, me and Flo, uh, we're doing really good. We're getting uh, a lot of uh, people who, uh, basically, I call them nibblers. Um, basically, the the hooking around uh, the uh, the bait of the hook. I'm not saying it like the hook is a bad thing, uh, but uh, basically, we've, we're still waiting for the uh, big fish to uh, or the big fishes to start reeling uh, reeling them in. And this is the point that we're at, and we think we've just landed in a bit of a, a, a cold spot uh, with the like financial year ending. Everyone's busy with them the end of year fin finances and things like that. So I think it, it could be a mixture of that or if, if there's something that we're, we're actually doing wrong because we we seem to be, we get momentum going and it's like at the moment we've just not got the, the coin to drop, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so there's a few things there, Leon. Um, this business does ebb and flow. It will have peaks and troughs for all of us. Yeah. Um, and it's okay. And I think we need to know it's okay. Um, we don't get told that in the beginning because I think we want to try and be as positive as possible. Um, I, I would always say, be honest with yourself. And as a leader of your, your part of your team, are you doing enough to encourage and motivate? Are you encouraging them to attend events, team meetings? Are you picking up the phone and calling them to attend Power Up? How many of your team are, are actually attending Power Up? Um, this time of year before this main event that used to be in March, Express Day, um, th there's generally a little bit of a dip because we're excited, we need re-injection with this um, new exciting information and new things to roll with. Mm. So, you know, the weekend's not far away, but I would, yeah. I'm actually now encouraging, especially new team members, to get a point in the diary for next yeah. week, ready for the announcements to hit the road running. Yeah. And then the last thing I would advise is a little bit of personal development for you and suggest some little personal development tips for your, for your team. You know, if you if you re listen to a really good podcast on YouTube, it could be a five minute clip. Post it mm. on, on the, the WhatsApp and ask people to give you, um, you know, what they take away from it. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really good question. Leon actually, um, Cheryl, Leon actually listened to um, The Secret recently and that got him like, wow, fantastic. Buzzing. So. Great question, Leon. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to open it up. I've got Jane on here. Jane, hello, Jane. How are you? Jane's always got questions. She's on WhatsApp all the time asking questions. So, Jane, anything you want to ask Cheryl? Um, yeah, because I'm quite new to this too. And obviously I started it probably not the right way. I'm doing it kind of full time because I was contracting during the pandemic. 
and I lost sadly lost my job um so kind of I don't know whether I should be I have been doing it full time and it's it's peaks and troughs a bit and I, I did have a couple of people join and then I had people from BA but they wanted me to do it for them <laughs> <laughs> they said oh we get the customers but you can do all the work and I do do all the training and I am getting the the small team I've got together for the power up day but it's trying to get them a bit more motivated because the two girls from BA one of them was still working the other one she's lovely she might like my best friend but she's had furlough and I said to her she was out of her training I said Jane I've got to get you to a QD. So I got her to a QD. She picked two people. I did both the appointments and she got £500. She was so happy. But then we started approaching some of her other friends. And of course, when they said no, she hated them. And she said, I don't want to do this anymore. It's so what would you suggest? Good question, Jane. Good question, Cheryl. Okay. But there, there, there's lots of things in there. I do apologise. My dog Sorry. just somebody Probably up. too much. <laughs> No, not at all. Again, um, doing this business full time, it, if that's what you wish to do and you can do, then great. I would yes. say make sure that you have your, your office hours and be, be strict with those office hours. Mm. You know, this business can spill into time that we don't want it to spill into and it can affect, you know, other parts of our life. So make sure that you've got some breaks, make sure you've got some really yeah. good things to yeah. look forward to and make sure yeah. you celebrate the successes. You've said that there's peaks and troughs. We need to celebrate the successes, yes. but that's the activity, not the results, okay? Always, always celebrate your activity. Don't just focus on results because we can forget the stuff that's going on underneath that will prove fruitful mm. in time. Um, the activity is absolutely crucial that you keep a record of and you can track what you're doing. Um, the um, follow-up is absolutely crucial. Mm. If any team members ask you to do things for them, then you want it more for them than they want it for themselves, unfortunately. Mm. And I recognise that sometimes in the beginning when I was recruiting people, I wanted it more for them. Um, they didn't really, they wanted the idea of it, but the pain that they were in wasn't enough. So go looking for other people, fish in other ponds, mm. um, keep spreading your wings, keep offering this to other people. And I'd probably say one in 10 will actually do something. Mm. Um, but if you look at, you know, somebody's big business and you count on, you know, you could count how many people are what I would say big hitters. There's not that many, but it's OK to have people that just want to do a little bit now and again. Keep them engaged. Keep yes. communicating with them. Let them do what suits them and don't let them compare what, what you're doing full time to what they want to do part time. Yeah. I mean, what I, I mean, before, obviously I was in finance, so I have managed people. So I get, you'll always get the people that really don't really work that hard and you'll get the people that do. So I do understand that. And I've always kind of, some of them, you do have to carry them a bit, but yeah. yeah and I, I am very up on the training because I've trained people before. So I'm kind of, if I've had a problem along the way, because we have one, had one or two, I had a really good girl that she was going to come back, but because we couldn't get together this year, but we did a lot of car boots together and we got quite a few customers that way. That's, that's when it took up off last year. And she was a bit like, we've got to stay on the stand. I said, Joe, nobody's coming to the stand. So I went to the car boot people and I said, and I, I had my diary and I said, I'm fed up because we did do one car boot where we spent a month phoning people and got nothing. So the next time I said, we've got to go to them. They can't move. Yeah. We'll go to them, tell them about it. And I got quite a few customers for doing that. Because I find with the winning mini stands, especially if you're at Car Bootsdale, people avoid you. Yep, definitely. Well done. Yeah. And you found a way around it. So brilliant. Keep keep thinking, what yeah. can you do to make this better? What yeah. can you do? And if you find that doing this full time is not what you want to do, it's okay. Um, and I say that with an open heart that, that I've had people in my team that have changed and done this full time and then realised it's, it's not working as well for them. Sometimes busy people do do better at this business. So fitting it in part time can work really well for some people. Doing this full time can work well for people. Yes. But don't, 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 you know, be upset with yourself if you need not to do it full time. No, I don't know if that's OK yeah. to say, but, you know, you've got to find a happy medium for you. Uh, and um, whatever you do with this is okay, but you've got to make sure you keep your goals in sight. What do you want from this business? What income makes a difference for you? What activity do you need to do to make that happen? What are you going to achieve along the way? Um, and is that okay with you and your family? Mm. 
the only important yes. thing as well, Jane, is that you were doing a win a mini. It wasn't working. You thought outside the box and said, hang on, I'm, I'm going to go to them. Because we have so many people say, I did a win a mini. It didn't work. I'm not doing that again. You yeah. know, um, I, I've done I've, I've done a few win a minis. Car boot cells. Um, I, I don't do so many car boot cells. I find they are very hard. But, you know, you've got your shopping centres, you've got the school fates, school fates are brilliant and things like that. And Michelle Vint, you're a winner mini queen. There you go, Michelle. <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> I've got a quick question, Michelle, although, um, with it being the Easter holidays and things, um, how do you battle with the mum guilt? Because I've been, like, going for, obviously I was going for the holidays, so I didn't get it, but, like, work my ass off. But um, going for STL, and I feel like I'm just torn, you know, children there, business there sort of thing. Like, Michelle, that's a really, really good like, question. Yeah. I got loose pimples again. <laughs> you know, as mums, as parents, you know, we, we have that guilt all the time. And I totally feel for you and I agree. And I still have it, which is probably why I got loose pimples. I think it's really important, like I said to, um, to an, uh, the other question, I can't remember who it was now, about having your office hours, or Jane, having your office hours and trying to stick to it, but you're letting your children know when your office hours are, not making them too long, that they're going to be pulling each other's hair out and cutting each other's hair and things in that time. Maybe, you know, if there's another adult at home or you can get some support or there's another team member that you can actually buddy up with and say, look, I'll have your kids for a couple of hours while you do work and you have mine. Uh, that's a great thing to do. But I think it's really important that you keep things in perspective. You are doing this for your children. And yes, you went for the holiday and, and, and you didn't get it this time. However, the income that you probably earned would allow you to have some treats with your children. If, you know, I'm, if I'm just making some assumptions and I'm trying to compare it to myself. Um, I've also beat myself up for things I haven't achieved. Um, and I'll maybe mention that in a moment. But I think we can easily beat ourselves up, but we, we don't often celebrate what we have achieved. So I can't recommend enough to just maybe have an accountability buddy or a success buddy within your team or cross team or just, you know, give Rob a ring and just say, look, you know, um, I've done this, this and this, um, you know, any advice where I go from here or can you just, you know, if, can you just keep me accountable kind of thing? Um, but definitely celebrate it. It's really important that you have time in your diary that everybody, in, you know, within your family has fun together. Uh, yeah and I feel like because obviously doing this business it means we can spend time with the kids so the fact that we've been at home for the Easter holidays and been able to go out with them that's kind of like I know I've got friends who've had to go to work and they can't spend time with their kids so it kind of balances out it just means that I haven't been able to do what I want to do and when I am work, I took them to do labour letters the other day oh my god I had the baby on the bike the bike fell over whilst I was posting letters oh it was a nightmare and I posted letters but I just haven't been back to follow them up because I can't drag the kids out. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. it's a bit Michelle, crazy. Well done. You've, you've taken the kids out and you've done neighbourhood letters. And I, I actually would say taking children on neighbourhood letters and collecting is the best thing po possible. Give the kids the letters. Ask them to give them or ask them to hold your diary. Ask them to give a leaflet. If they're not, if it's a no, give them, get them to give a leaflet. And every time they give a leaflet to somebody at the door, um, give them a sweet or give them 10p or give them an apple. Um, they keep a little chart of what they're actually doing so they can count up their 10 P's and then you take them to the shop at the end. Um, a little reward for them to come in out to help you. But you know what? The people at the other side of the door, they love kids and they find it very hard to say no to kids. That's a great top tip. Can I borrow your kids, Michelle? I want to do some You can have them. <laughs> yeah, you can have them if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I'll there send them down. Kids. You can have them the next holidays. You can have them. <laughs> After that question, Michelle, you can have everybody wanting your kids. You'll have all the free time anyway. <laughs> but Michelle, don't be hard on yourself. Set some little goals that you want to achieve from this business. Yes, the big holidays are amazing. Um, and there are, like Rob said, there's some new things going to be announced this weekend. Go for them. Go for them wholeheartedly and just keep track of where you're at. But definitely celebrate along the way and make sure you have some rewards for you and the kids. Cheryl, you mentioned that, um, I'll come to you in a minute, John. Cheryl, you mentioned that um, you went for something and missed it. Yeah, so really sad. Three years ago, I had nice. my mum and it, it rocked my world bigger than anything ever. The hardest time I've ever had. Um, we were in the middle of going for Orlando for the second time and after experiencing it once, um, I promised the kids that we'd go again and my head wasn't in the right place. I wasn't in the right place emotionally and mentally um, to, to do very much. So anything that came my way business-wise, I worked with, team I worked with as best I could. Um, 
and yeah, I promised myself that the next holiday we'd go for, um, and that was Greece, and we didn't get it either. I still wasn't well, I wasn't right. Um, and, and this one, this one again, Mexico, we, we've fallen short, too short, you know, things have been really tough over the last year. Um, so three holidays now in a row, um, we haven't achieved. And yes, I've beat myself up. I've apologized to the kids. But you know what? The kids have had me home full time for the last five years. So I've got to look at the positives. I've had time to recover from the grief of losing my mum. And I've been able to look after myself as best I can. I've been able to afford to pay for Indian head massages, osteopath, um, natural treatments that I've wanted to do for myself. And this business has allowed me to do that. I look back and I don't like what I went through, but I couldn't change it. It was, it was grief and it, and it hurt. Um, there's new holidays coming out. I'm in a much better place now. I'm stronger. I'm, I'm a, lot, a lot better and healthier. Um, and yeah, I'm going to hit the ground running when that new announcement's coming out next this weekend. I can't wait. Cheryl, I, sorry, I didn't realise uh, you lost your mum. I, I, I'm sorry about that. And okay. um, I, I think we can all appreciate what you went through and, and still go through to this day. You know, it's yeah. not easy. But, you know, like, as I say to people, life gets in the way. You can either have a really good time or it can be really tough, really hard. But I've always found that the UW family get together, give you big hugs. And I can't wait to come and give you a big hug, girl. Um, I've got John. John Wilkinson would like to ask a question. Hi, Cheryl. Um, just say I'm an ex-PE teacher as well, so uh, it's good to have that rapport. Um, I'm out doing neighbourhood letters with a young lad that lives in the same village. It's cross-team work, but uh, and I'm getting him more comfortable about knocking on doors and talking to strangers. But he's of a generation that's using social media and he would love to see there's a new announcement uh, about doing more uh, advertising on the internet. And I'm saying, no, this is a people to people uh, business. Do you have people joining your team of 25? And how do you encourage them um, to get out there and talk to people face to face? That's a really, really good question. And you're right about the generational uh, changes and things that they're used to doing that maybe, you know, other age groups are not. Um, definitely you're doing the right thing in, in um, refraining from wrong social media advertising. But however many followers or friends he's got connected with his social media accounts, I would just recommend that one at a time he messages them the way that we teach them to message them. Um, just suggest that he's got something that he'd love to share with them. Um, when can you spare some time, you know, 20 minutes to have a chat? And let, let him share share that with them. Um, yes, we do have lots of young people in the team. One particular team, uh, part of the team, is um, with a young guy called Dan Wells. He spoke at some some events, and he's recruited quite a few youngsters. And also cross team, he's created um, a youngsters. I think it's a Facebook group as well, and they're doing a youngsters um, opportunity presentation as well, quite regularly. So what I'll do, I'll send the information over to Rob, and he can forward it to yourselves. Um, it's an open one. It's not just for his team. It's cross team. Um, so if you've got youngsters that would like to see the opportunity presentation, it's nice to actually see it being presented by a youngster and having other youngsters on yeah. there. Yeah. Um, again, just in encouraging other youngsters to get together, asking on the, the main Facebook page and asking within the team if there's youngsters that would like to get together and thrash out some ideas that's really working for them. So cross team collaboration, really, and just seeing what's working for people. That's lovely. Thank you very much for that. Okay, thank well, you. John, I never knew you were a PE teacher, eh? Look at that. Still looking. Well, qualified as PE teacher, but went straight into sports centres and leisure management where people want to do a sport rather than the Monday morning sick, lame and lazy, sending them on a cross country. Not much fun. <laughs> I know. I remember those days. <laughs> we don't we don't make it do we don't make them do it in their underwear anymore. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I forgot my PE kit, I was always told you're still going to do it in your underwear. I'm like, great. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's get off that subject. Um, right. Any other questions for Shell? Anyone else got any questions for Shell before we wrap up today? Oh, you're all very quiet. I think, Cheryl, you've given us um, some great top tips and ideas there. And um, uh, again, as I said, I'm sorry to, about the loss of your mum, and but I'm sure she will be looking down and you'll be very proud of what you've achieved and Tim and, and what you've done for the family as well. And, and like Michelle said, you know, you can have this kind of 
you know, children's guilt, like, you know, I should be, I've got to spend time with the children at school holidays. And I agree, take time out. That's what this business gives. It's You, you didn't do it to have another job. You did it to have that quality time with your children. Um, and even Stuart Edmondson said it's one of his um, kids' birthdays today. They're eight, aren't they, Stuart? And they woke him up at six o'clock this morning, all excited, you know, um, I spent just wanting their presence. But, um, yeah. Um, and, you know, I didn't qualify for the holiday this year. I really wanted to uh, qualify for the Maldives, but things happen in life, don't they? Things get in the way. I was on track for the first half and then lost it. But you, I like the way you look at a positive thing from that. You know, you've earned more money, you've built up your pension pot um, and, you know, you spent time with the family. Yeah, so, absolutely. Cheryl, Cheryl, thank you, thank you very much for giving up your time today. Um, we all wish you the very best. We look forward to seeing you on stage as a senior group leader very soon, I hope. And guys, if you want to find Cheryl, find her on Facebook. Um, she, she, uh, John, she's the 25 age group. You'll find her in that part. Okay. <laughs> um, have a great day. Have a great week, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank and, you. Uh, see you all next Thursday. Thank nice you. Bye. Thanks, Rob. Thank you.